All right, guys, welcome to another video in the fish room. Apologies if I just made you dizzy. Mm, disaster. Anyway, a um, little bit sick and tired of this tank. So today we're going to switch it up. Um, got some leftover product and um, equipment, that kind of thing that I can that I can use. I've got a spare 40 gallon right there that I can put all these fish in um, while I do the rescape and it's going to look completely different to what it is looking now. So pretty excited for that. Um, yeah, it's the tax of the day. Welcome back to another Cichlidscape video. If you're here through the recommended or suggested section, like around 80% of you are right now, please hit the sub button to stay up to date with the channel as we've got some pretty cool videos coming up that you won't want to miss. Anyway, as mentioned in the intro, today we're turning this into this. So first things first, let's drain the tank. Luckily for this, I do have a spare 40 gallon aquarium, but if you were doing this and you didn't necessarily have this available to you, you could use a tow or even multiple five gallon buckets, which I have done previously. During this draining phase, I'm going to take out some of the decor, which will make catching the fish a little easier. If I can get some of the rocks out during this time, that will be a bonus too. I just need to make sure I don't disturb the substrate too much, as it is aqua soil and does get cloudy, dirty, and uh, then you can't see a thing. So at this point, I feel like I can get the majority of the fish out. I just might struggle with some of the smaller tetra, but the angels, keel cichlid, and some of the other bigger fish that I've got in there will, will come out all good. So as you can see, we've got the majority of the fish out and here's the little temporary tank. I put all the wood in there, a lot of the plants are still in there. They will be coming out periodically throughout the process, but for right now, the fish will do great in here. I'm actually now going to get the plants and the remaining decor out. That'll then help me get the rest of the fish. There's only about six or seven smaller black neons um, but once i get those out it'll just make this process way easier and way quicker so while the fish are out tank is fully drained so now we're going to scoop out the substrate i will be reusing some of this but most of it will be just stored up for future use a dustpan would probably be the best thing to use to get all the substrate out but i only add a cup so um yeah, had to use that and it worked out pretty good. Took me about 15, 20 minutes to get all the substrate out and then I actually kind of filled up the tank a little bit, got out the rest of the debris and after that we are looking at a fresh clean slate. So we've got the crypts and other substrate needing plants in that little pot there. The rest of the rhizome plants are just in the tank for right now with the fish and the driftwood. But now it's time to get this tank going. I cleaned the front glass just to make it a little bit better in terms of viewing for you guys and also viewing for me once we get this aquascape going. But really excited about this. And first we're going to put down some egg crate in the center of the tank. As I'm going to use an island aquascape, which I've actually done before, but Probably most noticeably, uh, if you're an older subscriber, um, in the 125 in-wall aquarium that I had in the previous house. Loved this tank, loved the setup. I think the fish looked fantastic in it as well. And a lot of these fish I've actually continued to keep. So there might be a little bit reminiscent of that tank too. Granted, this is only a 4 foot 55 gallon and that was a 6 foot 125, but same kind of vibe. So... This egg crate will just help with the pressure points on the glass. Um, I am going to be putting quite a lot of rock in here and stuff, so that will just help with that. I'm going to be reusing the stone that you previously saw in this aquarium, which is Seriu stone. This piece, of course, is not Seriu stone. It's just a fake piece, but it does fit in with the coloration of the Seriu. So I think I can kind of set it back there and it'll still look pretty decent. So this will, without a doubt, be the longest part of the process. At this point, I'm just trying to create something that looks appealing, but also something that creates a barrier between the island and the rest of the aquarium floor. 
you'll see why later, but after a while, here's what we have. I'm really liking how this looks right now, and it could probably just be anywhere Gumi in its own right, but the height's a little bit off, and of course I want to add some driftwood. This will just add height to the scape, and it'll also be a nice little additional natural element to the tank, which I think the fish will enjoy. It'll also look pretty cool in terms of viewing as well. So the driftwood's in and here's what we have overall i'm really liking how it's looking i just put some teddy bear stuff in or some fine filter floss between the gaps and the rocks which will prevent any substrate leakage moving forward pretty happy with how it's looking right now um i'm actually going to use a mix of the sand from the 125 and the 55 so hopefully this turns out nice sand done and i'm pretty happy with that too i think it's got some nice little shades of white in there but also it doesn't look too too fake uh looks pretty natural so happy with how this is looking right now so now we're gonna add some aqua soil to a few sections of the tank and this will help the plants that are going in there grow i'm also going to put some gravel in behind the back as well which will help provide height to the back section this will just assist with a sense of scale in the tank and everything kind of going backwards and going away from your eye. So after carefully adding the aqua soil and some of the little pebbles to the back, here's what we've got. I'm going to throw some root tabs into the soil now, which I got from aquariumcoop.com. If you're interested in any of the products that you've seen in this video, um, root tabs, filtration, sand, I'll leave everything linked um, in the description, so feel free to check those out. But these root tabs will just help provide the plants with additional nutrients. I'll probably put more in there every two or three months once the ones we're putting in now have kind of dissipated, fed the plants for a little bit, then you'll kind of need to throw some more in there. And we'll be putting these into the substrate and kind of spreading them out one every probably two to three inch i think that will cover a lot of the plants good we are going to be having some big root feeding plants in here like jungle val uh cryptocarini species and that kind of thing so definitely not going to be light with the additions of these tabs once the tabs were in, I actually decided to do something I'd not done in any of my aquariums, and that was to cap the soil with some more of the sand. I think this will just make the tank look a little bit more natural once it's planted, instead of you seeing that aqua soil in and amongst the cryptocarine species and, and the dwarf sage in that kind of island section. It'll also prevent any of the soil rolling down when the fish are digging in and around the plants and then rolling onto the main aquarium floor, which is then just a pain to clean up. So with that done, let's get to planting. Here I'm using a mixture of cryptocarini species, some dwarf sage and some jungle valve for the two kind of planted sections. I'll also be throwing a dwarf aquarium lily in there as well, which will look pretty cool especially once it starts kind of throwing out those big runners and reaching to the top of the tank so with the traditional planting done the rest of the plants are actually going to be attached to the decor as they don't require traditional planting and here they are once they've been put into the tank these are anubias and java ferns which I simply wedged into gaps between rocks or the wood for the most part, but some actually needed to be connected at the rhizome with some aquarium safe super glue. Again, I've thrown this item into the description if you want to check it out. Overall, I'm absolutely buzzing with how this tank is looking right now, so let's get it filled. To do this, I'm simply reversing what I did before and taking the same aquarium water back to the 55 that's been with the fish in the 40 gallon. This will make moving the fish 
really, really easy too. And I'll just add them to the tank during the fill periodically. Once the 35 to 40 gallons from the holding tank were in, I filled the rest up with fresh water. So it was basically just like a 15 gallon water change for these guys. This obviously won't shock the fish in any way. And I just made sure that the temperature was the same going into the tank, which is around 77, 78 Fahrenheit. After adding the filter, the heater, the additional hang on the back filter to the tank, and after waiting about three hours for the tank to clear up, here's how we're looking. All right, guys, so there we have it. A 55 gallon four foot aquarium transformed in probably about six or seven hours. Really, really happy with how this turned out. The fish are looking great. The tank turned out fantastic. I'm really excited to see how this one progresses, how the plants grow and how the fish continue to interact with the environment. If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know by liking it. Leave a comment down below. If you've not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. I've got plenty more videos like this for you guys moving forward. We've got some 125 updates. We've got some cyclic breeding updates. We'll continue to update you on this tank. And we've got a saving your planted aquarium from absolute disaster video coming up for you next week, I believe. So be sure to hit that sub button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching until this point and hopefully we'll see you next week for a brand new video. Bye for now.